All right, welcome. Today we're going to be doing Mr. Robot. So as you can see, I've been messing around with trying to get a uh, hydro work with this, but um, it obviously gave me a lot of incorrect stuff here. Um, so the first thing uh, you will see very quickly, this box is a little slow. So I went ahead and already did a uh, brute force on it. But uh, <clears throat> that is something that you're going to have to do on your own. But just to make this video not last six hours, I went ahead and already did brute force. So let's go ahead and run an MMAP scan like real quick. We'll do an MMAP. TAC P TAC, TAC T4. And we'll look at this guy. And we see we got port 80 up. Alright, cool. So let's go ahead and look at port 80. And we got port 443 up. So let's also look at HTTPS. See if we get anything. Wonder if it's just going to be the same exact thing here. Pretty sure uh, it is. We got that for port 80 and same thing for port 443. Alright, so since we know that we're running a web server here, let's go ahead and do our good old trusty uh, dir search. So we'll cd into uh, dir search. And we'll do a Python 3 dir search. We're just going to use medium.txt. Something a little bit smaller here. And we'll do HTTP. There we go. Put our IP address in there and we'll be done with that. And those are going to be the two ports that are open on this. So it looks like we got WP content here. We also have a login. But there's zero bytes returned on that. Uh, WP content, 239 bytes. WP login, that's a big one like right there. So pretty sure we're using WordPress here. Um, and you do have to know some information about Mr. Robot. Uh, to be able to accomplish this one. So let's go ahead and look at that WP login like real quick. So let's do a slash WP login. And there we go. Alright, so username, I don't know, we'll try admin admin. Whoops, well, we can do that, whatever. Admin admin, don't save. Uh, invalid username. It's not saying the password's invalid, okay. Uh, let's try um, something like, I don't know, uh, Ryan admin. See if we get an invalid username again. We do. Okay. So this is good information like right here. This is telling us that, hey, there's an invalid username. Admin might be one of the passwords. We don't know yet. So we try root. And if we know anything about Mr. Robot, we can look up Mr. Robot. And we can look up the Wikipedia here. And we have Mr. Robot, American Drama Thriller Series by Sam Esmill. So we might be able to use Sam there. Um, as we go through it, there is a main character here. And his name is Elliot. It is pretty much the main character. So, and it follows Elliot throughout the whole thing. So we could try to do Elliot in here. And see if we get anything else. Elliot and Root or something like that. Or Admin or something like that. And now it says the password you entered for the username Elliot is incorrect. So they're saying that there is a user named Elliot, just the password's incorrect. That's a uh, that's a big deal, like right there. So we can go ahead and look at that. Oh, we also have a robots. Look that up too while we're at it. So let's try to look up a uh, same same thing with robots. I'm also wondering, oh, look at that. Okay, cool. So we have key one at three dot text and F society. All right, so let's go ahead and look at key one at three. We'll go ahead and put that one in like real quick. And then we also have an F society dictionary attack. So definitely uh, Mr. Robot style here. Uh, looks like this guy might have frozen, but we got a lot of the information that we already need. So we're actually just going to stop him. So that's good. Uh, we'll go back and put in that key that we got there. Cool, very cool. Oh, didn't realize I was even supposed to get a streak today. I'm trying to get up to seven to be able to do some stuff. It should not have expired. That should be a lie, actually, because I did just uh, add on an hour to it because I wanted to get that other thing working. No, no, but 100% expired. You already have a machine running. Yeah, this machine. I know I do. This one, like right here. Let's see if we can ping it still. I could be able to ping that. Also, I have to be able to ping anything if I spell it wrong. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm still hitting it, so it's still up and running. It's just lying to me. All right, so that's okay. Let's see if we can still get to it. Nope, nope, not like that. Let's see if we can go back. Uh, let's go to that F Society, because uh, that looks like a dictionary to me. So let's try that and see if we get anything to download, and we sure do. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that file, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and delete the other ones I already have in there. I'm going to remove tech RF. Um, actually, let me CD back to my folder here. I'm going to remove tech RF F Society. <clears throat> Move tech RF F Society. Dynamic. Move tech RF test. I have quite a few tests in here also. And we'll do an LFTech LA. Um, and then we'll do go ahead and remove those two also. Alright, cool. Alright, so we're all ready to go with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at F Society. We'll do a workout on it first. Um, let's copy it, or actually we'll just move it. Download F Society Addict here. And let's go ahead and do a workout on it. Workout Tech L for F Society. And there's 858,160 different passwords in there. Um, now, if you actually look at it, like right here, as you can see, it's episode, 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 like that. Uh, we can actually get rid of all that stuff we want to. But uh, what we're going to do is we can see a lot of stuff that's repeating. And I'm wondering if, like, entering repeating, you know, ensuing repeating, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run something that will delete all that repeating. So we can look that up. Uh, delete repeating words. Repeating words in text file. Uh, Linux. We go ahead and do that. How remove duplicate words from plain text file? And to be able to do that, we're just going to do a uh, unique. Okay, so we're just going to look at it and just see which ones are unique and things like that. So what we can do, and we can drop into another file also. So we type in UNIQ, isn't it? Unique for fsite.dick. And we'll drop that into uh, sorted.txt. Okay, yeah, that's all it is. Let's go ahead and do a WC tech L on sorted. Nope, that's not it. All right, it's unique something. I always forget this one, so that's why I sort file name unique. That's what it is. Okay, there we go. So if I do a sort, yep, there we go. So I did sort f society dot dic. We'll grep it for unique, or not grep it, pipe it for unique, and we'll save it to f society and try to spell the same. There we go. F society sorted.txt. We'll do that. And we'll go ahead and remove tech rf sorted.txt. And let's go ahead and do that workout again. Workout on uh, F Society sorted.txt. And as you see now, we only have 11,451 passwords to use. So that definitely got rid of a lot of stuff there. Um, that still takes a long time. I ended up using Metasploit. As you can see with the Hydro one, when the video very first started, uh, it was just showing a lot of stuff as being correct, things like that. So I ended up using uh, Metasploit, and I ended up using testing out a couple different uh, modules to be able to do it, but it ended up being WordPress XML RPC login to be able to get to it. Um, and if I go to Show Options here, if I do a Show Options, all right, my pass file was test1.txt, um, obviously not anymore, but uh, now it's fsocietystore.txt. My R host, whoever I'm connected to. Stop on success, I set to true. My username is Elliot, which we pretty much enumerated uh, just by looking up who Mr. Robot is and stuff. So we got our username and everything, so Elliot. And then from there, uh, my target URI stayed the same. Kept the same amount of threads. Uh, I did do it the other day where I did like 100 threads or something like that. Didn't really seem to do much for it. Uh, brute force speed is already defaulted at 5. So kept pretty much everything the same except for the information that I already knew that I wanted to change. So, um, yeah, we got all that and everything in there. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and log in because we did find this password here. So there's this password like right there, ER280652. Control shift see that. And we'll go ahead and hop in here and see if we see anything. See if there's anything uh, of importance in here. nice is if he has admin privileges we should actually be able to change different information here within the themes and stuff like that we should be able to customize some of them 
So we can go to appearance and customize to see if we're able to do anything like that in here. And we might be able to customize one of the themes and get it to point back to us, which is ultimately what we want to do. So we're just waiting for this guy to load. Like I said this box is uh it is pretty slow. Uh while that's loading, you guys can go and check out the actual just the actual web page here. See so if you can find anything on there. I mean there's a lot of stuff on there. If you ever watch Mr. Robot, this all makes sense, but uh if you haven't, you're just gonna think the guy hates America. He doesn't, don't worry. I don't know what kind of password that was. This guy's taking a minute. Let's go ahead and try to do a editor. Let's go to editor, not themes. Okay, that, that went pretty quick. So we can edit stuff over here, supposedly. So let's do a 404 template. Let's see if we can edit this at all. And if we can, good. If we can't, oh well. So I went ahead and I already moved my reverse shell over to here. So if I do an ls tech la, you'll see rev.php. Um, and we'll also come back over here and we see that this is also a PHP file. So if we can delete this, and we can, all right, we may be able to load in that rev.php. And I can if I do an if config first, so you can see that my IP address is all the same, 10.9.1.2.18. Then I go ahead and do a uh, cat on rev.php. And let me lower this down like a little bit and increase this up here so we can actually get some more room here. And we can see that the IP addresses are the same and I'm going to be listening on port 4444 or it's going to be sending information on port 4444. I'm going to do an NTLVMP 4444. We'll get that up and listening and we'll go ahead and copy this whole guy. We're just going to copy him and then just paste him like right in the whole thing now. Just like that. We'll paste him right in there. Look at that. Look how nice. We'll update that file. And now we should just be able to go somewhere that doesn't exist. Um, that doesn't exist. As far as I know. Scroll down and yep, sure enough, because that would be a 404 page not found. We do a who am I? And we see I'm now Damon. Damon. So let's go ahead and open up another terminal over here. All right, we'll go ahead and get rid of this mess play module. Just about. There we go. And uh, let's do my cat for my full shell. Do my cat for my scripts. And then we'll do a full shell. And we see we got our Python like right here. Uh, let's do a which Python first so that we don't break the box. And okay, yeah, we are running Python on it, so we can go ahead and do that. All right, and now we've got it in, right? LSX LA, we're in their box, cool. So let's CD back to home, see if we can get anywhere else. All right, we got a robot user. Let's go ahead and try cat Etsy shadow. I always like to do that just in case. Yep, permission denied is what I thought. All right, but we're going to CD into robot, LSX LA. And we see here that we cannot look at that file, that key to a three dot text. We don't have any read permissions, we don't have any write permissions, but we do have read permissions for password.raw. So let's go ahead and look at that. That's the cat password.raw. And we get this. And we know it's an MD5 format. It says it. Let's go ahead and grab that guy. We'll go out to the web. And we'll go ahead and uh, MD5, that guy like right there. I should already actually have it saved in here. Uh, it's not a very hard one once you actually get it. And there it is, A, B, C, D, A through Z. So we go ahead and copy that. So we're pretty sure that's robot, right? User robot. So we'll SU into robot. And we'll go ahead and put that password in. And it looks like that worked. So I am robot now, as you can see. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, who am I just to make sure that nothing's messing around. And sure enough, I am robot. So let's go ahead and cat that key to a three dot text. Um, and I know that looks weird. Like right there, I am hitting tab, and it does actually auto-complete it. Um, it just doesn't show up because we're inside this terminal over here. So we got our key to a three, so let's go ahead and copy that. So you can still auto-complete stuff, even if it doesn't show up, um, as long as you have that which Python and everything else. 
All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and run a sudo tack out. See if we can do that. And oh, that is not my password. 100% not. Let's say, and I broke the box. All right. Let's go back into here. Go ahead and do that. And we cannot run sudo. Okay. Uh, let's try cd in the root. And we can't do that either. Try cat at the shadow. Can we do that? And we cannot. Okay. That's okay. Let's do an SUID lookup. So we'll do a cat for our uh, SUID lookup. So I'll do my scripts and SUID lookup. Right, and there it is. I'm going to go ahead and do an SUID lookup on here. And we'll see what we get. And immediately I notice something that we shouldn't have. That we can uh, utilize for a privilege escalation, and that is nmap. So we see this nmap like right here. We could use that for privilege escalation. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this attack. Hope, oh, nope, there we go. All right, so uh, earlier today, we stopped the attack and ended up logging us out of here, which then ended up uh, breaking the box also. Um, so that is a problem. But we know that we can run nmap. So what can we do with mmap? Let's go ahead and do GTFO bins. And what we're actually going to be doing is we're actually going to be running mmap in um, interactive mode. But we can go ahead and type in mmap here. And we know that we have an SUID for mmap. Now, SUID is showing us to install, blah, blah, which mmap, okay? Because if the binary has the SUID for set, it does not drop the elevated privileges. But it's saying that we can run it. So let's try to do first the sudo mmap interactive mode. Let's try to do that first. Let's just try to do mmap tac tac interactive because supposedly I can't run sudo. This is a lot easier than putting in all the other stuff. So let's do this first. And as you can see, we now have an interactive mode of mmap. So we're going to do a bang slash bin sh for shell. And my shell has changed. Who am I? I am now root. All right. So let's see why that happens. If the binary is allowed to run as a super user by sudo, which I'm not allowed to run sudo, but I was allowed to do the SUID, but if I try to do all this, that one does not work. It does not drop the elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system, escalate or maintain privileged access. All right, the interactive mode available in versions 2.02 to 5.21 can be used to execute shell commands. Um, I think we can also type in which mmap and actually see that version. Nope, it just shows us where it's at. Okay. Uh, can we type in mmap tac tac version? Can we do that? And we can. So we're using point 3.81. So we know that that does fall within, obviously, between these two. I mean, I'm not good at math, but that was not too difficult to figure out. So we got to there. We do our ls tac la. Uh, we're root now, so we can go ahead and cd into root. We're going to ls tech la, and we see our first boot done. I, I don't know what that is. Let's try it. Cat. Let's go ahead and cat that. Let's see what it is. It's a file. Okay, cool. All right, but we can cat key 303.txt. We can cat key 303. We're going to go and copy and paste that, and we have our key 303. Now, I'm not quite done with this box yet, because I like to do more. Uh, you know, e learn security style, not just CTF style. So let's go ahead and try cat at the shadow from here. Because that's something that we should keep. So let's go ahead and do a nano shadow.txt over here. We can get John the Ripper to go against that. Maybe use the, uh, there we go. Maybe use that one file that we got for it. Maybe use that as society. We'll try that. So we'll do John. We'll do a word list for. Uh, F Society, uh, we'll do sorted, uh, it's not an NT format, and we'll just point that at shadow.txt. We're going to see if John the Ripper crack any of these. Uh, this is more just, I guess, above and beyond, I guess you would say. Alright, um, nope, doesn't look like he can. Even though there's Elliot in here? Elliot is not in here, okay. So I wonder if we can actually crack it with... Um, User share, user share word list rocky.txt. What if we can actually crack it with that? And we'll see if we can crack it with this guy. This is just, just see what else we can do to this box. That's all. 
Um, see if we can steal some SSH keys for Root, if he has any. He does not CD back into Robot. Oh, there's Robot's password. Boom. That was in Rocky.txt. Alright. Does he have any SSH keys? He does not CD back back. SSH was not even open, but we could open up that port. Um, we could do a lot of things. Um, can we do this? Let's see what's running. Um, we don't have anything for CD back in the robot. We don't have anything for like a bash history or anything like that, really. So we're only really getting so much information here. So, but once you're root, you can mess around, really do whatever you want to. You can create things, all that good stuff. Um, CD in the temp. Sometimes good things in there. Not really seeing much in here though. CD into a slash user. User source. CD into source. Because we might be able to CD. Nope. CD back back. Uh, we could always try CD into um, var www.html. See if they're. No, I can't do that. Okay. Where am I like right now? Okay. Not the root folder. Yeah. CD into a slash var. Can I do that? CD into var. There is no www. Huh. CD into temp, maybe? Yeah, okay, that's weird. There's no www. We can always try CD in backups and just look at different things, see if they have any backups in here. Uh, G Shadow Back, that's a good one to look at. Um, Shadow.backup, so that might be a good one to look at also. So we can always cat uh, Shadow.back because that's a backup of the Shadow file. So there's that, like right there. We got ourselves a backup of the Shadow file. Bit Nami FTP. I wonder if that's uh, supposed to be something with FTP there. But as you see, we uh, we cracked the machine. We got into it pretty quickly. I mean, that was really quick. Um, like I said, I used Metasploit module. I tried to use Hydra, as you saw in the beginning. I tried to use Hydra, but that one wasn't really... It gave a lot of false positives on there. Um, so... I already cracked the password before you guys started watching because it is extremely long to be able to do that. And I think I already, nope, it's down here. Right, so I already cracked it before you guys started watching. So, because it takes a really, really long time. And I don't think you guys want to watch it go through that whole thing. Um, but yeah, and then we sorted it by unique. So then we didn't have the same words twice in a row, things like that. Um, but that should be about it. From there, we after we cracked that password, after we did our directory buster, found that they were using WordPress and cracked that password with Elliot by just looking online and seeing, hey, who's you know main characters for Mr. Robot. We were then able to uh, get into there, change the theme for 404, right? So we changed the theme for 404, not found. We then went to a web page that put our reverse shell in there, went to a web page that doesn't exist, which should give us a 404 not found. Uh, had our listener up and running, which then got us here. We then figured out that there was a robot, and it had an MD5 password in there. Uh, once we got that MD5 password, we were able to crack that pretty quickly. That was super easy to crack. Um, and then we're able to SU to him, figure out that MMAP's an interactive mode, or that he could run MMAP with his SUID bit, ran that MMAP an interactive mode and uh, did a bang bin sh which then allows us to get a full shell which well, then allows us to get our root shell um, from there just going above and beyond we took the etsy shadow file looked for some backups tried to find see if they're using a uh, bash history or anything like that couldn't find much of that stuff but that is okay but this is the time if um you only do capture the flags things like that you should really uh, start to look around more into different systems, stuff like that. Start to look at where stuff's running, everything, because that will help you out whenever you start to do more uh, penetration testing and not just capture the flags thing. I think capture the flags are great to learn privilege escalation, uh, learn how to get into a system, but actually get around and actually looking at what you need to look at, where you need to go, and things like that. Um, 
you need to just kind of do that every single time you get into this machine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you learned something. And, yep, have a good one.